In this wiring diagram, which is wiring diagram number seven, we're going to expand on our um, system a little bit here. And we are going to talk about a, a steam system that uses an air handler. Okay, now in this last one, we added the ability for a circulator to be used along with a steam system, but we didn't really have any control over the water temperature that the circulator was being added. In hydronics diagram number seven, you'll see that we have now a blower motor fan for under a different power supply from the, um, from the rest of the system. We have another disconnect down here. Okay, up here I also have an L1, a neutral, and an L2. So we got to be very careful here of what we have. Okay, um, to the system. So we have a steam system with an air handler. So it's a forced air steam system. Okay, you see this sometimes in older commercial buildings. Okay, so I'm going to do the obviously the easy things first let's go ahead and connect this cad cell in let's go ahead and connect the um thermostat in okay because we have a single space thermostat we have a cad cell we have a primary control okay i'm going to go ahead and do my neutrals which really there aren't that many neutrals on here Okay, I'm going to do a neutral there. I'm going to jump it to there. And I'm going to bring my neutral over from my primary control. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect in my O terminal on my burner. Okay, now the only thing I have left to do is I need to connect my um, any, I need to connect my line voltage coming in to my 120 volt side of the circuit. Anything over here is basically 120 volt. Anything on the lower side, with the exception of the pressure switch and the 120 volt coil is 240 volts. So we gotta be very careful here. So I'm gonna come in from L1. I'm gonna come to my breaker. I'm gonna come out of my breaker. Again, all my safety switches are gonna come in series. Okay, I'm gonna come from my service switch. My first I have two places I need to go. I need to come down here to my pressure switch. So we're going to go ahead and wire that in, but I also have to wire this pressure switch in. These pressure switches has two different purposes, and I'll talk about it in a minute. Remember, my pressure switch that opens at 3 PSI, that's an operating control. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wire that to 3. You could also wire to 2. But I don't want to cross wires here, so we're just going to go ahead and wire it into three, and I'm going to provide power to my primary control. Okay, out of four, I'm going to provide wire power to my water feed valve. Water feed valve is going to come back, and we're going to tie this into neutral eventually here. Let me get this back over to neutral. And I got to be careful because I got to leave room because I I have another line voltage wire I need to get around there. So I'm going to tie that into neutral. Okay, now I also come out of this pressure switch here. I'm going to come to a 120 volt coil. And anytime I have a coil, let me just bring that down a little bit. make that look better okay we're gonna bring it back to neutral okay 
So my 120 volt side of the circuit is fine, but now I have a couple components down here that are 240 volts that I still have to deal with. I'm going to change wire colors here, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do my 240 side of this, my L2 I'm going to use black wire for. So I'm going to come out of L2, and I need to do go to the disconnect, okay? We cannot just treat it as a neutral because it's not a neutral. So anytime we have an L1 and an L2 labeled, especially anything higher than 120 volts, we have to switch both sides of the circuit. So I'm going to come out of my disconnect for L2, and I'm going to come over to my top side of my contactor there, and I'm going to come over to my blower fan. Out of this side of the blower fan, I'm going to come to that side of the contactor, and I'm going to return to L1. I have to straighten this one up a little bit there. I'm going to come out of L1. Now this is where it gets interesting. Because that is a disconnect for an air handler, I'm actually going to come up all the way to the top. It has nothing to do with burner control, so the building codes are a little different. It's a disconnect for an air handler. And we are basically going to tie that in right there. Okay. So once again, L1 and L2 together bring 240 volts down to this blower motor. Everything else is 120 volts, okay, with the exception of that low voltage thermostat there. So what is going on here is thermostat calls for heating, okay. We per start providing power to our primary control. We say primary control, turn the burner on and start heating. Okay, as long as this pressure switch is closed, in other words, it's under 3 PSI, which is a standard steam pressure, we are going to run the burner. The pressure is going to start building up as the water boils. Once the water hits, I think this pressure switch says it's set for like a 1.5 PSI. As long as the water hits that 1.5 PSI, in other words, I have steam in the system, we are going to energize this 120 volt coil which will turn on the blower fan. What that does is it actually prevents cold air from being blown around the space. We know we have steam in the system once we hit a pound and a half PSI at the air handler. This whole cycle continues until the thermostat satisfies and shuts off. Now the key is that this burner and this boiler has to be big enough to handle the heat load of the cold air or the cooler air blowing across this coil. So sizing is pretty important here, or this will cycle on and off. If you ever come across a system where that air handler is cycling on and off on a steam system, check that pressure switch and make sure that that boiler is big enough and providing enough heat with nozzle sizing and everything in order to provide the proper steam to that air handler. But again, just a variation on a steam system. 